Hey everyone, it's Ridge. Alright, welcome back to another um, inking demo. So what I thought I would do is, so we've done all of this section in brush, if you watched the previous video. Um, and uh, what I thought would be kind of fun is, now I'm going to take a crow quill, this is a Hunt 102, and I'm going to ink a little bit of this area, and we'll see what the different characteristics that a quill gets compared to a brush. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start up top, see a little paper on my nib, pen tip. Um, we'll see how this nib is. It was, it was good yesterday, hopefully it's good today. Okay, you can see. What you find with a crow quill more than with a brush is you're sculpting lines a bit more. So you're actually kind of creating the lines by... drawing them. So it's not as spontaneous, I guess, as a brush. Try to throw a little thin line right here. Yeah, the paper is coming up on this pen tip a little bit, which is no good. I'm telling you, the struggle is real. A lot of times I actually have gone to Micron for stuff based on the paper quality just because um, it's a softer tool on paper that wants to shred. It can be real frustrating. I don't consider this bad paper, though, in a weird way. It's it's a little hard to explain because it it has a strength to it. Like there's there's definitely an integrity of the paper, but for fine detail, it's not great. It's a weird, like like real thin lines go down pretty good, but it's when you start to push down a little hard on a crow quill. You're just the paper just kind of crumbles a bit. I, I'm not 100% sure what the DC paper is, to be honest. So for me to say that it's Canson or Strathmore would only be a guess at this point. I've lost um, the script on what they're using exactly. And what's interesting is, okay, so I'm inking pages right now. I think they're from the same batch as this. But I'm not 100% sure, because you can't tell. You could you could buy 20 sheets of paper, or get a stack of comic boards sent to you by DC. We'll just say, as for instance, you don't know for a fact that every single sheet of that paper came from the same exact source. You know what I mean? It could be two stacks that were mixed together. I mean, it could be from a completely different sheet of paper. Um, you know, maybe that one didn't get as much of the spray for the plate finish that gets that kind of real smooth, slick top to it that protects the paper from, from ripping and tearing. There's actually been some really, really great comments in the comment sections of the video of people that, that have given me insight into paper and tools. So it's the information is going both ways here on this channel, which is really, really cool. But you can see these lines have a little bit of a different character. I tend to maybe like double up and triple up lines a little bit. Um, again, I can see there's a little paper on my pen tip, so I'm going to wipe it off real fast. Again, this is a pretty pretty fresh pen tip, or, you know, like a 102. I, I started this one yesterday afternoon, and it didn't get a lot of miles on it, so it should still be pretty good. I'm, I'm going to order some new pens very soon. I'm kind of excited to see where the 102 is at right now. Most of the pens that I'm using, pens meaning the little metal tip, are from probably four to five years ago, if I was going to guess. I got, I think, you know, like a hundred, a hundred of them or something like that. And they last me a long time, depending on what I'm inking. If it's really, really precise work, you might go through one a day. Um, but I had one like super nib. Someone asked me about like how long they last. And I was saying that some can't even really make it through a page. And I had one, and I'm not even exaggerating, this pen lasted like three full books. It was insane. Um, I inked Jim Lee with it, John Romita Jr. Um, God, I, and like one other thing. It was crazy. I actually kept the nib. I like retired it. Um, I have it right here. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. It's, I think it's right in the desk next to me. It's not a big deal. It looks just like the one I'm using, but yeah, it's right here. I actually retired it. 
I was like, you can see this, the, the um, little pen holder thing is a little pink, pinker still. But yeah, I was like, dude, this nib goes into the Nib Hall of Fame. I'll sell it one day with the original, one of the originals that it inked. <laughs> but yeah, it was really funny, but I, it felt like it, it needed its own sort of, um, like there was a hard rock cafe for comics, like that pen deserved it. I had a brush like that too. I had one brush that just went on and on and on. Windsor Newton, uh, number three or four. It was a fairly big brush, but man, thing was a beast. And, you know, again, someone had asked me about brushes, you know, how long do they last? Like, they had bought a couple that just weren't good from the beginning. And, um, you know, that can happen. Um, let's see, I'm going to take the brush here for a second. I would say, in general, my, uh, um, the average Winsor Newton brush has been better for me than other brands. There's, um, a blue brush that the Cubert school sells. It was really weird. We would order brushes and all of a sudden they started sending like their own brand of brushes. And they were okay. And they, I, I, I don't remember them being like outstanding. It was a little weird though because you know, you'd order like Winsor Newton and they'd be like here's these. It was not a personal order I should stress. That was from through Wildstorm. Okay I'm going to do brush on these. Um, but um, y yeah so those were okay. The other brushes that I used quite a bit were Raphael Kolinsky Sable brushes. They started out great. The, like the first ones that I would use, I think Scott Williams was used them. Um, Sandra Hope too, um, and uh, I really liked them. And then all of a sudden, it felt like the quality went down on them, and I just wasn't getting the results. And I felt like a lot of new brushes really lacked the things that I needed out of the gate on a brand new brush, or what I would expect, especially something that you're spending, say. I don't even know, 15 to $25 on. I don't I don't know the exact cost of brushes off the top of my head, but we'll say the average is like $18. It's not cheap. And I mean, imagine buying three brushes for, you know, some like 40 some odd dollars and they don't work great. I mean, it's just a nightmare. That's no good. You know, I, I understand as all artists, we're like, we're on a budget until you get to like the icon status. So... You know, tools are tools are important, and you want stuff that's consistent. And unfortunately, a few of the things that you're going to find are never consistent: are paper, ink, um, and brushes. You know, and, and pen pen tips. I mean, and they're real important things, but there's just no easy answer for them. Okay, so when when I tell you that there's no easy answer, or I say like, you know, this is what I've had good experiences with. It's more of an average, you know, like by about 100 brushes, 90, 90 of them that were good, you know, kind of thing. Okay, so I hope that this helps and you get to see a little more of how you, you blend different um, tools. And moving right along on this. So, got all this. I mean, and again, I'm not inking this whole piece, so so just don't get confused. I'll film this little black that I sculpted with the um, 102. Um, but yeah, the goal the goal has never been to ink these whole pieces. It's just there's no point. It's too too much too much work on my part for no real reason. Um, but uh, we'll do all the key parts. Like I'll ink the horns, and we'll we'll, we'll touch on all the cool stuff that you want to probably see how it's inked. So that's what we got. Hey, smash the like, please. Check out my Patreon if you can if you can tip a dollar, that would be killer. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. And then the one thing that I'll say is, if you can't afford to do Patreon, share my video somewhere today. Share a video that you liked and went like, man, that was pretty cool. I would I would I'd like to help this guy out and share because I I would love to bump up my views and also my subscriber base. You know, it all encourages me to do more of this as well as all my Patreon supporters. So, all right, thank you guys very much. I want to thank Wiki Wiki Jama, James Smith, Jason Davis, Rob Stillwell, William Hernandez, Josh Chocoti, Dario Di Donato, Fabio Gonzalez, Martin, Jezaria Hopkins, Kurt Kroll, Reese Hannigan, and Adrian. You guys rule. Thank you. All right, have a nice day, and get drawn.